preacher man, let me tell you something. If there's anyone that should maintain his composure at this table should be you. You are the academician. You were the one that went to school of divinity. I didn't have any kind of schooling. I didn't even have kindergarten. <laughs> so you should be more civil with your tongue. You told folks that I'm disgraceful because I smoke marijuana. <laughs> I said, but that is the God in heaven truth. I will always smoke marijuana until I die. But you see, I can't violate God. You violate God on many levels, I said, preacher man. Just go to the book of Genesis. The herbs are for the healing of the nations. In the book of Genesis, in the book of Revelation, in the book of Ezekiel. How did you happen to miss that? I said, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to try to help you. I said, whenever a black man put starch and blood in his mouth, not only would he deny God, which every preacher on the planet is exhibiting today, and you are one of them. And I'm not blaming you preachers to do that, because we didn't know how effective starch and meat could be against the Creator. They put us in a state of stupor. Could you imagine that the Bible states that the herbs are for healing and the fruit is for meat? Doctor, you don't eat any meat? No, I don't eat any meat. No beef? No. No pork? No. No chicken? No. You and today fish? my wife wants me to go and eat some fish. <laughs> but you know something? They got some, they got some group of fish here. That look, I'll tell you, man. Off. Don't tell me about it. <laughs> I hate to come to the Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> No, but let me come to this one. I may, I really, I may put a piece of fish in my mouth tonight, but okay. I'm going to tell my wife, don't try that again. <laughs> <laughs> but what is wrong with a piece of um, uh, stew beef? What's wrong with some nice uh, fresh pork? What's wrong with some nice uh, uh, chicken breasts and so on? What does that do to the body okay, that but I'm is harmful? My, okay, I'm going to use myself and my clients as an example. Right. I was only 30 years of age, and I was totally impotent. 30? 30. No, I was impotent at 20. No, I was impotent at 28. 28? Yeah. because oh, You're see, supposed to be firing on all cylinders. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't firing on any. <laughs> I was dead, down for the count. I was 27 when I was diagnosed as having diabetes. I was born with asthma. So I had asthma for 27 years plus diabetes. At 28, I found myself impotent. Oh my God, impotent at 20, at 28, all the way to 30. But I was eating the thing that you said because my mother know how to cook red beans. Yeah. She even put a bit of, of syrup in it to make it kind of sweet or sugar. And co coconut milk and rice, coconut milk and the, and, the, and the beans with this rice and this, this nice little piece of chuleta, pork chop. I thought my mama loved me. But what I found out later, her and I was talking. She said, how do you feel about me feeding you all these things that were bad for you? I said, mom, did you know what you were doing? She said, no. I said, that is what we have to do now. We have to clean up, mother. Mother, we have been a victim of 600 years of imposition. We don't know what we should eat, mom. Mom, I escaped death. Because I went to the United States and I began to listen. I was cured by a Mexican in Mexico in 1964. I was 31 years of age. When you say cured, that means your impotence was eliminated. Oh, uh, eliminated. So Your asthma was eliminated. I don't have that anymore, nor do I have the diabetes. And many other things. I was insane. I really hated people. And this is how I know that when someone is deploying these words that are less than good, make you feel good, the person is sick. I was there. I did that. I want to kill my ex-wife. And the woman wasn't bad. Marilyn was a very good woman. And I love Marilyn. Oh, I love her. I love the woman now. But I want to kill her. But that wasn't strange. Look what Phyllis Hyman, the great singer in America, did. She killed herself. Not only her, 
What about Angela Yates? She drowned her five boys. She had to do that. We have to begin to look at disease, uh, at the act of the individual, and place it in a disease perspective. We are sick. Because I could have killed my wife. And I'm not a criminal. Why did I want to kill my wife? Because I was full of mucus. The mucus was on the brain. When mucus is on your brain, you see things, you think all kind of evil things. Look, people tell me that when they are in the bed, just laying down, thinking about nothing in particular, here comes this ugly thought. They'll yeah. have them crying. Yes. You see? Right. It says that the brain now is stress. When the Mexican removed my disease state, I used to cry every evening around 4 o'clock. I used to go home to cry. But I remember locking the windows, making everything dark. I live in a very dark world. And notice carefully, people that are stressed go in their house. They live in a dark world. They don't want the outside to come in. They don't even want you to come into their life because they are very stressed. What, go on. What did you create, doctor? One of the products that I have been using, in addition to Viento, and I'll come to that in a minute, is this product called CMOS. I've never found a product in my life like a CMOS. When I started, Jamal gave me this product one day when I came to his store, and it changed my life. It changed my life. Now, you and I have talked on a couple of occasions, but this product changed my life. Jamal gave me this cup to drink the CMOS, and I haven't been the same since. Now, I've been a vegetarian of sorts since 1982. I've been very studious, uh, astute and fastidious about my diet since 1982. But when this brother gave me that CMOS, that was a different thing altogether. I was like going from grade school into college. Yeah. Just that, like that. Yeah, Boom. It did that to me. Totally. I know. Right? So, and, and Jamal is uh, tremendous in explaining all of the phenomenal benefits and, uh, and, and characteristics of CMOS, but there's something still must-see about CMOS that I am not sure of because, man, it is, it is phenomenal. What is it about CMOS? CMOS. CMOS scientifically is known as chondroscripsis, and it's supposed to have potassium iodide, potassium phosphate, a large percentage of calcium, and magnesium. This is why I could fall on my knees on concrete right now at 78. I don't feel any pain. I was far from a standing position. Seymour strengthened the bones. Seymour strengthened the brain. The brain. Seymour have the power to bind radioactivity. Seymour is powerful. I didn't make Seymour. God did. I just combined Seymour with bladderwrack or fucus verisicosis, and they make a beautiful combination. How often should I take CMOS? Look, drink it as much as you want, all day, every day if you want to, because the more you drink, the better it is. It's cheaper by the dozen. What does it do for you? It does everything, except it doesn't fire the body up. It, it strengthens the body, but it doesn't fire the body up like iron. You see, iron is the spark plug of the human body. Okay. Iron is the only mineral on the planet that is magnetic. So, being that iron is magnetic, it have a tendency to pull other minerals to it. You understand? It pulls magnesium, calcium, phosphorus, zinc, opium, and all the rest. Gold, it, iron pulls all those minerals to it. So, it would be safe to say that when you take large doses of iron every day, you are taking all the other minerals on the planet. Pro but they say protein. that if you take large doses of iron and makes you this, you makes you that, and it's bad for you. I tell you what, they are absolutely right. If you take too much iron, it would even bind you. Yes. It would 
cause astringency mm -hmm. in your intestines. That's correct. But you're not talking about God iron. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, but iron made in this factory somewhere. They are talking about ferrosulfate. Jamal sells you iron fluorine. There is a difference. Amen. Ferrous, ferrous sulfate is derived from the oxide state of iron. Iron is expressed on two levels on the planet. One in a plant, the other a rock. But when you take the iron ore and you smelt it, you make a bridge and you make steel. But you can't put that in the human body. Right. And this is what the drug stores have been selling us. Oh, gosh. What we do is to sell you iron fluorine, not ferrosulfate. And you can take a, as much of that as you want. Look, I'll tell you what. Uh, you, you could take a bottle a day. At this rate, I want to tell you a little story on iron. There's a little man coming from Bakersfield, California. Dr. Sabi. Please don't leave Los Angeles right now because I have to see you. I have to see you. The poor old man hung up the phone. And I couldn't respond to the old man. I wanted to tell the old man that I didn't have any more treatment. All I had was a case of iron. But when the old man, by the time the old man drove from Bakersfield to L.A., I already had my brain working. The old man doesn't know what my treatment really are. So is, I said, Mr. Johnson, his name, Rob Johnson, Mr. Johnson, I said, sir, take a bottle of iron a day for seven days. And what that man did, what that man told me, by taking iron in seven days, a whole bottle, nobody ever tell me before him. His sugar went down, his penis came up, his <laughs> eyes cleared up, his energy went, the, this old man began to tell, but the old man didn't know. That oh. he did not get the regular treatment from me. All I had to give was I, and I was taking a chance. How old was he? The old man? Yeah. Oh, he was young. He was 86. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but wait. That, how about Uncle Bob? Um, <laughs> Uncle Bob is in an old folks' home. Now, this story, I'm, I'm writing this in, a, in my book, my second book. This old man, Uncle Bob, is in an old folks' home with a bunch of women. He's 90, okay? All the ladies in the 70s, late 70s, late 60s. But the, the, mess, the, the mess boy in the kitchen told me, he said, hey, man, what you giving that old man? I said, why you ask me that? He said, man, something changed, eh? I said, because you see all these ladies? They were complaining about the waffles was too, was too dry, the eggs was too wet, the, 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 the this to that. Everything was bad. But since you've been giving an old man this medicine, I mean, I've been cooking the same food the same way, and nobody is complaining, but everybody is laughing. What was happening? <laughs> you asked Uncle Bob. <laughs> <laughs> he was taking care of business. Yeah, but Mother Payne was taking care of business at 87, too. <laughs> we went to look for Mother Payne one night in D.C., and we knocking, 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 knocking on the door. And Mother Payne wouldn't come out. So this old man come out and said, what y'all want? He said, we came to see Mother Payne. But look, get away from this door. And bam, he slammed the door. <laughs> 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 hey, he, he's back. Look, let me tell you something. It's 90 beautiful. years of old. Batten. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> you, you think that Mother Payne is batting a thousand? No, Uncle Bob either. <laughs> now, come on. Come on now, fellas. Last month, a month before last, a young man in Somalia got married. Right, that was 17. How old was the groom? I'd like to know. Come on, take a, take a pick. 45. No, up, twice. 55. No, twice. 95. Twice 55. Twice 55? Yeah, come on. 110. Go up some more. 115. No. 120. 117. 117. He was 117. Married a 17 year old. He is only 100 years older. So they asked her. It, it was on CNN. So they asked, they asked the girl, Well, how do you know that your honeymoon light would be consummated? He said, I already know because I'm pregnant. <laughs> 117. That's right. You call, call CNN. Good God. Dr. Zippy is my guest this afternoon. Hey, you got a question? 
three two rather let me go to your uh, sec, um, uh, text line three seven six three eight six eight three seven six three eight six eight friends let me tell you something let me tell you something uh, and I want you to listen to this very carefully Dr. CB is going to be at BFM tomorrow at one o'clock you want tickets you can get tickets tomorrow uh, beginning at 9 30 at new life or you can get it today you can go right now a new life. New life is just north, just north of the Little General Store on East Street. Most people know where that is. Or you can call 323-0075. Let me tell you about Dr. CB. This is about proof. I'm not talking about what is theoretical. This is proof. Dr. CB is a man who was cured by his program and his methods and his recipes. His new electric foods for electric body is cured. Did I say cure? Spell it. C-U-R-E. Cured. Diabetes. Cancer. Every kind. AIDS. Lupus. Herpes. Blindness. Sickle cell anemia. Paralysis. Hypertension. Insomnia. Asthma. Fibroids. Autism. Alzheimer's. Impotence. Mental illness. Prostate cancer. Heart disease and much more. Heart disease, hypertension, diabetes is the killer or are the killers in the Bahamian society, including all other diseases such as cancers and so on and so forth. Do you want a cure? Or do you uh, want to um, succumb to the medical establishment and orthodox medicine who talks about managing your condition? No, 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 no. Dr. CB is about curing. You heard him earlier in this program. He'll repeat it for your benefit. In four days down at his village in Honduras, diabetes, been around for 25, 30 years and somebody's be, uh, being cured. Did I say cured? C-U-R-E-D. Tomorrow, go by Jamal, pick up a ticket, and present yourself at BFM at 1 o'clock tomorrow. You know what BFM is on, Kamaika Road, yeah, 1 o'clock tomorrow. Doc CB is going to be giving a talk. Products are going to be available? Products are going to be down here tomorrow. Let me tell you what, I, I, I'm talking from experience. Did you hear me say I say experience? Make sure you get CMOS and Viento. Make sure you get CMOS and Viento. Make sure you take your Viento and CMOS twice a day. Friends, let me tell you something. You will be a different person completely and totally. I, now, I've been a vegetarian for 30 years almost. 